Hi there. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a realistic gold foil texture in Photoshop with adjustable lighting effects. Typically, as you'll find in many tutorials of this sort, they usually utilize a gradient of some sort, giving you the artistic responsibility to achieve a realistic effect, which may or may not be realistic in the end. This method I'm about to show you takes a bit of a more natural approach. To get the resulting effect, first we will create the basic texture using a couple of Photoshop filters and then we'll finish with a lighting effect to give it that reflective look. Here I have a 2000 by 2000 pixel document. You can set yours to whatever size you want, but you'll have to adjust the values in your filter settings to compensate for the size of your document. So keep that in mind if you decide to use a different canvas size. Next, add a solid color adjustment layer with a metallic gold color. This will serve as the base color. So we'll name it accordingly. Right click and turn it into a smart object. This will allow us to pile on the effects we need to turn this into a gold foil texture and still be able to edit them after the fact. We also retain the ability to go in and edit the base color later if we want. Next, add a noise texture and set it to 8% Gaussian monochromatic. Add a cloud filter. Be sure to set your foreground and background colors to white and black respectively. You can also press D on your keyboard to reset the colors. In the layers panel, you can see the noise and the cloud filters listed. These are live filters, so we can double click on the noise texture for example and edit the values. Since the cloud filter has no settings, double clicking will only generate a new variation. Keep it up till you get a variation you like. Now you'll notice the base color got hidden when we added the cloud filter. In order to recover it, double click on this small icon to the right of the clouds filter. With it, you can adjust the opacity and blend modes of the smart filter. Set the blend mode to soft light and click OK. This will blend the noise with the cloud texture. We'll add one more filter to complete the texture. Go into Filter, Filter Gallery, and under the Distort drop-down, select Glass. Set the distortion to 20, smoothness to 4, and leave the other settings as they are, then click OK. With our texture done, we'll proceed to make it shine. Make sure the texture layer is selected from the layers panel, then go into Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. This might seem strange if you've never been here before, so for a quick rundown, this filter simulates the behavior of external light hitting the layer. The preset drop-down allows us to choose from different lighting configurations. And with these buttons, we can choose from three kinds of lights to add to the workspace or reset the settings for the selected light object. There's also the properties panel where we can manipulate the light settings, including color, brightness, and so on. The light panel shows a list of lights in the workspace, similar to the layers panel. We can hide or delete lights from here. Finally, the main workspace lets us adjust the lights like move, rotate, or change the direction. Now let's begin with the default preset. This gives us a simple spotlight to work with. It may not seem like much, but it's all we need. Place your mouse pointer near the outer boundary to rotate the light. We're going for something of a 45 degree angle from the top left. Move the light by clicking and dragging from anywhere inside the boundary. Then adjust the light until you get something close to what I have on the screen. Now 
In the properties panel, set the intensity to 60, hotspot to 45, but leave the exposure and colorize as they are. Set gloss and metallic to 100. Remember, we are going for a metallic gold foil effect. Then set the ambience to somewhere around 60. For texture, in this case, we can choose any one of the options. So I'll set it to the red channel. Then give it a height of 1 and click OK. There you have your gold foil texture. Now let's put it to some good use, shall we? I'll hide the texture for now and bring in a logo from Illustrator. To see a tutorial about how I created this logo, you can follow the link in my video about the Illustrator repeat tools. Never mind the color of the logo. For a nice background, I'll copy and paste a paper texture from Unsplash. You can find the link in the description below. Now I want a dark paper texture that will really show off the gold foil effect. So I'll apply a hue saturation effect to the background image, desaturate and reduce the lightness value. Now I'll turn on the foil texture and place it directly above the logo in the layer stack. Then right click on the foil layer and create clipping mask. Alternatively, you can hold the ALT key and place the pointer on the border between the two layers. When you see the pointer change, click to activate the clipping mask. And now you can see the gold foil texture appears only where the logo is visible. In order to make it seem like the logo was stamped or heat pressed on the paper, we'll select the logo in the layers panel and add a bevel and emboss effect with the following settings. This is of course optional, but it adds that small touch of realism. If you wish to change the color of the foil texture to maybe rose gold or even silver, you can apply a hue saturation adjustment over the foil texture and clip it so it only affects the texture. Now you can easily change the color of the texture or desaturate it to get a silver effect. Finally, for extra control of the reflections, we can apply a curves adjustment layer. Make it a slight S curve and click OK. But you'll notice that the curves adjustment also makes the color of the overall texture more vibrant. Now that's fine if that's what you want, but I'll take it a step further and limit the curves to only affect the contrast but not the color. So we'll make use of the smart filter setting and set the blend mode to luminosity. This will force the curves adjustment to only change the luminance but not the vibrance. By now, you might be thinking, I want to make everything gold in Photoshop, but this is such a lengthy process to get the Midas touch. Well, gold doesn't come easy, except in Photoshop. You can save the gold foil object for future use, and I'll show you two ways. Remember, we applied all our filters to a smart object, so we have the flexibility that comes with smart objects. With your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you can simply drag the layer into your Creative Cloud library and have it saved there.
So in future, you can drag the layer into whatever document you're working on. Photoshop by default loads it as a flattened object linked to the cloud. And there you have the whole layer intact. Remember, you can always come in and change the values in the new document, but the original source file from the cloud remains untouched. If you don't wish to rely on the cloud, here's an offline method. Remove all extras in the document so you only have the gold foil, smart object, and possibly the hue saturation adjustment layer. Then save the file to your computer like any other Photoshop document. I have it saved as gold foil texture. So in the future, if you need to apply the foil effect, go into File, Place Embedded. This will tell Photoshop to import a copy of the foil document as a smart object. Double click on the thumbnail to access the layers and filters from the original document. Notice that this one is named Gold Foil Texture 1. This tells us that this is a copy of the original and whatever changes we make here do not affect the original document. So you can change the filters, lights and colors, then save to make the changes visible in the main document. This has been a rather long-winded tutorial, but I hope I've been able to pack enough value into this video for it to be of help. If you have any questions or ideas for a more realistic gold foil effect, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Kindly share this video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, and let me know if you'd like to see more Photoshop tutorials. Until next time, go forth and make more Photoshop gold.